Okay, our last foray into Newman projections will involve adding one more carbon. We're now looking at butane. For butane, we're going to look down carbon 2 and 3. So we, uh, we're going to treat this much like ethane, except for um, on, on the carbon-carbon bond, instead of having a hydrogen on both ends, we're going to have carbons on both ends. So let's look at what this, how this might appear. So here was, I'll draw this out as if it's our original picture of ethane, and we had hydrogens all around. Now on our end carbons, two, well, not, uh, coming off of carbon two is going to be a CH3, and car coming off carbon three, which is behind carbon two, is going to be a CH3, and that, that would be carbon one and four that we can see sticking off here. So let's put stars by them because those are going to be our reference points. So here we have a dihedral angle of zero degrees for our reference points. This is, um, this is an eclipse confirmation. And we're going to work our way across. We're going to draw all four confirmations. I'm going to try to draw them fairly quickly. Uh, let's leave the front carbon in place. And we're going to move, uh, rotate this back carbon or, or carbon three by 60 degrees. So we get here, this is called a stagger. This is a staggered conformation with a dihedral angle of 60 degrees. Let's keep rotating that methyl group around. And of course those hydrogens have to rotate as well. Redraw that front carbon as is, no change. Hydrogens there, so now dihedral is equal to 120. We're back to an eclipse confirmation. And lastly, let's rotate one more, make one more 60 degree turn. Front carbon stays the same. Now our methyl group on carbon three is sitting all the way at the bottom. Remember that's carbon one and that's carbon four, two, and we can't see three. Now we have a dihedral of 180. And again, this is a stagger confirmation. Well, as it turns out, we know a lot about what's going to happen here. So uh, this is a hydrogen-hydrogen eclipsing interaction. That's going to have an energetic cost of uh, 1 kcal per mole. That's also 1 kcal per mole. We refer to these as a torsional strain because we have eclip these eclipsing interaction, these uh, sigma bonds repel each other. As it turns out, once you start putting methyl groups next to each other, you get torsional strain, and these methyl groups start to physically encroach upon each other. And this got a steric repulsion. So this is torsional plus steric. And the total effect here is 3.0 kcals per mole to eclipse two methyl groups. Um, as we go to the staggered conformation, uh, as it turns out, we do have some strain energy. This is the first time we've seen two methyl groups um, that have a dihedral angle of 60 degrees relative to one another. And as it turns out, this has a, a repulsion of 0.9 kcals per mole, and that is a, this is a steric interaction. It's not torsional strain because these higher these um, CC bonds are pretty far apart from one another, but we do get a steric interaction. They physically bump into each other. Now we have this uh, eclipse confirmation that the hydrogen-hydrogen interactions are one. This is a hydrogen methyl eclipsing, which we saw from pro propane, is 1.3. This is a, that's a that's torsional strain. And then when we get to the staggered uh, confirmation, actually there's no source of strain. So this has a relative energy of zero. And now we can look at this on our energy axis, and the units there are kcals per mole and theta and what's our total energy for this particular eclipse which which i call personally the fully eclipsed because um it's going to have the highest energy it's one plus one plus three so this has going to have an energy of 5.0 let's mark out our landmark uh, positions This staggered conformation, we've seen the staggered conformations go to zero energy, but actually this one does not because we have this methyl-methyl interaction. This staggered conformation has a special name. It's called a gauche, the gauche conformation. And its energy is, is close to zero. It's about 
kcals per mole. Once we get to this eclipse conformation, the relative energy is 1 plus 1.3 plus 1.3, so that takes us up to 3.9. And then this, uh, and, and I call this partially eclipsed. It's not a real name, but that's what people uh, call it. And uh, when then we get to this dagger conformation has a relative energy of zero. Sometimes people call this the anti-conformation because these methyl groups are as far apart as they can be, 180 degrees, and so that makes them anti. So as we connect this curve, it's not the same curve as we saw, but it's the same rough shape but it doesn't bottom out in exactly the same way. So this is our energy diagram for butane. And uh, as you can see, we can simply add on these different terms like eclipsing hydrogens or uh, eclipsing methyl groups. And this curve is determined by a sum of torsional and steric strain.